Kuala Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, New Zealand lifts ban on eggplant export. AG emphasises on regular maintenance of sugar mills. And Ministry questioned on misuse of funds. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The temporary suspension on the exports of eggplant to New Zealand has been lifted. Sainian Mboila reports the decision was made following a successful meeting between the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji and the New Zealand Ministry of Primary Industries this morning. Eggplant exports to New Zealand were stopped two months ago. We formally received official communication uh, regarding the lifting of the eggplant suspension, uh, which we received uh, this morning. and. Um, this actually is coming at the backdrop of uh, having a lot of collaborative uh, uh, engagement uh, with New Zealand uh, MPI. I want to move away from issues resolution because there are always these things that uh, come up uh, as part of trade but move into a very positive uh, uh, um, engagement uh, to allow uh, development of uh, trade in both directions, safe trade in both directions and we want to focus on that rather than trying to uh, just solve the issues that we've seen in the past. Mm. The New Zealand Ministry for Primary Industries have banned the exports after intercepting live lava, lava eggs and adult insects on a consignment in April. When we talk about trade, um, this is of course includes the import and export of agricultural commodities. It is also our considered view that the trade of such commodities must occur on a biosafe platform and our meeting today is a clear demonstration of our resolve to strengthen our cooperation in this regard. The two agencies met this morning to iron out a number of issues relating to trade between Fiji and New Zealand. The authorities agreed that exports have been affected on some instances due to miscommunication. Fiji is the largest exporter of agricultural commodities to New Zealand. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. Addressing workers at the Rarawai Sugar Mill, Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum said regular maintenance of the Fiji Sugar Corporation mills is important. It was described as a systematic issue the government is working to address. Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Aya Said Kayum told mill workers today they should look at the long-term goal of the industry. You see many problems in the world today, if you see it even in our own lives, we can do what we call a band-aid solution. So make it look good for the media, we make it look good for the politicians, we can say, don't worry, put a fresh paint, paint here, everything will look good. But you need to actually address the systemic problems. Said Kayum says, government has moved the motion in parliament to approve $202 million guarantee loan for FSC to lift the standard of the sugarcane industry. Along with the maintenance, the sugar industry faces another problem due to non-renewal of leases. Obviously, if you look at the non-renewal leases, and you look at the sugarcane production in Fiji, it, it's commensurate with each other. In other words, unless leases were renewed, the sugarcane production continued to decline. FSC Chief Executive Graham Clark says the cane supply comes, but it is not enough. Lorries in the queue, plenty of oil trucks out there in the, in the marshalling area, but we need more. At this time last year, Rarawai Mill was devastated by tropical second Winston. Now it will crush 700,000 ton of sugarcane this crushing season. Rapata Valime, FBC News. Government is looking at amending the pay of sugar mill workers. Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum says mill workers must understand they will only be paid based on specialization and performance. The Rarawai mill workers were briefed about the civil service reform during a Talanor session. Civil service reform is one of the things we found out is the old way of thinking, you know, the old union way. Give everybody 10% pay raise. So you may be a very good worker and he may be a terrible worker because you got performance based recognition. 
The misuse of taxpayers' funds for sport and social club activities in the Ministry of Finance three years ago came under spotlight today. As part of the wellness program, the ministry made an advance payment of over $22,000 to a sportswear company via electronic fund transfer, but failed to recover the money from staff. Pranita Prakash reports. The money was used to buy sports gear for the staff, but the ministry is yet to recover the full amount. An internal uh, investigation was carried out, uh, and uh, since then, uh, in relation to the outstanding amount of 12,711, we've recovered uh, more than 50%, um, and the uh, recovery continues. The ministry today provided an explanation on what led to this situation before the Public Accounts Committee. So the procedure was followed, but uh, like I said, there was miscommunication between the staff who immediately, uh, actually were doing the payments uh, for the jail. The company should have gone back to government, but instead uh, went back to the the ministry says the staff in question have since retired, migrated or have moved to different ministries, but it has assured the deductions are being done for those staff that are still in Fiji and working in other ministries. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Dakandrove Provincial Office in Savusavu suffered 90% damages in a fire this morning. The damage value is estimated at around $40,000, which includes five computers, laptops, phones, fax machine, projector, tables, chairs and general office equipment. The 50-year-old wooden and corrugated iron structure caught fire at about 6 a.m. Staff of the Provincial Office are temporarily working from the home of the Rokutui Dakandrove. Still to come, hundreds pledge at UN conference and UN delegation to assess Fiji's defence forces. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Vanguma, Andi Moal, Rada, Ranalika, Otikongona Town, Singapore, and Otalisaka, and Avarong and Mbula Fan, number two in a survey. We have the Rasubuni Kurnabili. Borani buat sekarang hampara benar benar. Total tak kena na warung enam bulan FM. Nampak dua NSR. Bula. Bula FM. Nampak dua NSR. A four-year suspension has been placed on certain villages and settlements following reports of misconduct and disorderly behaviour of some seasonal workers in New Zealand and Australia. Employment Minister Chonio Somate says recent reports made by New Zealand employers are alcohol-related, failing to report to work, not showing respect, poor leadership, unhygienic living, high absenteeism and undue influence from the Fijian community. Osumate says seasonal workers that damage Fiji's reputation under the scheme will not be considered for future employment opportunities. He says these seasonal workers were employed with Provine, Bostock, Mr Apple, Teamwork and Apata in New Zealand. The suspension is effective immediately. Day one of the UN Oceans Conference wrapped up with more than 800 voluntary commitments registered at the online portal. Prime Minister and Co-President of the conference, Vorengen Bainimarama, has stressed that a collective global effort is required to change the tide of our degraded oceans. Maggie Boyle reports. At a reception last night, the PM highlighted just how important the ocean is. It covers three quarters of the Earth's surface contains 97% of Earth's water and provides more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe. It drives global weather patterns, absorbs around 30% of human-produced uh, carbon dioxide, and serves as a critical buffer to the ever-worsening impacts of global warming. Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden and Conference Co-President Isabella Levin says urgent action is needed. It is possible to actually make change. So this conference is not only about talking about the problems, but it's talking about and agreeing upon the measures and the means that we need in order to actually make the change possible. Bainuera are adamant that the future of the next generation is dependent on the changes implemented now. So far, numerous governments, civil society organizations, intergovernmental bodies, the private sector and individuals have committed to protect the oceans. We all have many narrow interests. But we all have one interest that uh, trumps up, uh, trumps them all, uh, and that is life. The life of the seas, the life of the planet, 
the lives of the living things on earth and the lives of our children and grandchildren. And in day one of the first ever conference on the oceans, the PM said he hopes a similar meeting will be held every three years to take stock of the progress made and strengthen the resolve going forward. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The United Nations has praised Fiji for leadership in championing the plight of Pacific Island nations, especially small island developing states that are threatened by the impact of climate change. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres highlighted this to Prime Minister Vorengen Bainimarama during talks at the UN in New York yesterday. Guterres welcomed Fiji's leadership on the global stage, especially at a time when Pacific Islands are facing serious global issues, including climate change and a decline in ocean health. He highlighted that Fiji's role as co-president of the Oceans Conference and president of COP23 is a positive indication of the work that has and can be done to address these issues. The impacts of climate change will slowly take its toll on the biodiversity of coral reefs in the Pacific. Scientists from the Tara Pacific Exhibition say degradation of coral is an issue in many countries and they have come to our shores to educate on conservation. Kelly Vardala reports. In the Pacific, most of the places actually are not so bad at the moment, but due to climate change, re leading to sea level rise, leading to ocean acidification, le leading to increase of ocean temperature. Things are changing. The coral reef are changing. It is clear that the coral reef we'll have in 30 years will not be the coral reef we have now. The 16-member crew of the Tara Pacific will be conducting discussions on the impacts of climate change on marine and coastal ecosystems with important stakeholders and the University of the South Pacific. We, we created, we built an ocean pavilion uh, in Paris to put the ocean on the, on the imagination of climate change and explain people that without healthy oceans, no, no healthy climate. Oceans are the cradle of life, contributing fundamentally to the Earth's functioning through their sheer size, productivity, biomass and diversity. The Tara Pacific is in Suva to educate people and do certain projects on how climate change has taken its toll on coral reef diversity. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Employment Ministry confirms there is no threat of airborne contamination after building materials containing asbestos were found in the Suva Civic Centre. Air tests conducted in areas around the centre by Pacific Environmental Services confirm that the public is not at risk from asbestos. The Ministry says air sampling will continue throughout the removal process to ensure there remains no threat to the public. Minister Chonio Sumate says the building materials have been properly prepared for removal and the Ministry is working closely with the Suva City Council, Department of Environment and New Zealand contracting firm Contract Environmental to finalise the action plan before removal this week. A United Nations delegation is in the country to conduct an ass and assess the facilities and capabilities of the Fiji Police Force. The purpose of the visit is in accordance with the mandatory process for all police contributing countries to determine their viability of Fiji UN peacekeeping pledges. The visit is also a follow-up on the pledge made by Prime Minister Vurengen Bainimarama to send more officers for UN missions. They visited the forensics unit and the CID headquarters, noting interest in potential deployment of forensic investigators to assist in UN-led investigations when required. So we're here for a few days to talk to the leadership, both on the police side and the military side, about how they want to contribute to peacekeeping operations going forward, um, to look at the units that they've pledged, see some demonstrations of their capabilities, um, talk about UN standards and requirements, both in terms of uh, equipment, training, but also in terms of conduct and discipline. Ahead in sports with Jamie, Fiji residents prepare for Canada tour, but joining us next is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Locals given first chance to invest at Yandua Bay. And in growing Fiji, rural school receives new furniture. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
We here at Tano Waterfront Lost Talk are love listening to Gold FM. Only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. The Yindua Bay Resort and Villas has launched a new website allowing potential investors to access detailed information with the option of sharing information across social networking sites. The new website www.yanduabayfiji.com will provide live updates on the development of the resort. Hexagon Group of Hotels Managing Director Dixon Sito says the group wants to give our local investors a chance to put their money into the project first. He says once the resort opens in October, it will be open for investors from overseas. And a number of factors are currently creating uncertainty on the world markets. With more on that, here's Elisabeth from HFC Bank. Vinaka, a few updates in our economic calendar. The Reserve Bank of Australia maintained its interest rate at 1.5% yesterday. Australia's gross domestic product for the first quarter was better than expected, up from 1.5% to 1.7%. Meanwhile, investors are reducing risks by being cautious making investment due to major political and economic events later this week. This has led to major U.S. stock indexes ending down yesterday. The Dow Jones fell by 0.23%, S&P 500 fell 0.28%, while the Nasdaq Composite fell by 0.33%. With Britain's general election underway, along with the European Central Bank policy meeting and former FBI Director James Comey's Senate testimony, it could all affect investor sentiment. Thanks, Elizabeth. On to today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar again today to close at 3.22 and 47 cents, respectively. Closer to home, the Australian dollar remains steady, closing at 62 cents, while the New Zealand dollar dropped, closing at 65 cents, and the PNG Kina rose, closing at 132. As for the commodities market, an increase across the index today as oil prices closed at 48.3 a barrel. Go went up by about $4 to close at 1,294 an ounce and silver closed at 1771 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, 200 desks and chairs have been donated to students at the Lomai Vuna High School in Siri. The donation, which includes uh, six tables for teachers, will replace the old furniture that were previously used by students. The $30,000 assistance will benefit close to 369 students of Lomai Vuna High School. To give you access to essential services and reliable infrastructure. And as we are making sure of today, ensure that your children have the resources they need to be cared for and properly educated. And that's your business news this evening. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up in sports, Olympic gold medalist William Emata looks forward to flying Fijian's debut. Also up ahead, Junior Farzan Ali and Sebastian Singh to square off at the end of the month. This and more after the break. I am from FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवरों को नहीं, हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे, मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट। हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफरेंडी से, मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं, मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट, I love मिर्ची एफएम। हम इस बीन तो तो ताबूआ के मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे। मिर्ची � The Vodafone Fiji football side played to a two-all draw against New Caledonia at Churchill Park this afternoon. Fiji was trailing 2-1 at halftime before Roy Krishna headed in the equaliser. Here are the goals from the match. Back to Emily, the centre-back avails himself, then inside the centre circle, a nice little pass here is given to Joseph Atale. Nice run by him, Atale comes in and the header following through. 
again we see the through ball and working through Kayara Dabi Randingingai warming up and a deep one it is to stretching coming through is Pierre Pierre comes in with a chip kick the header and the header by Mone Wamoi the Fiji defenders didn't want to go for that and in the 12th minute it will be credited to the New Caledonian Sajariki Hughes with the corner kick and it isn't a good one New Caledonia bring it away but intercepted by Tambu a good one it is Olawanga with a header and that's what was needed by him that confidence with the height to take the advantage and in the 46 minute of play Sola Wanga using looking for Sola Wanga again he's being marked here as Amani Makoi looking for the taller and Roy Krishna with the header Former National Sevens rep and Olympic gold medalist William Mata is enjoying his time with the Flying Fijians. Being one of the younger reps in the squad, Mata is trying to learn as much as possible from his senior teammates. Meli Tabanga has more. Playing for Edinburgh in the Pro 12 competition, Mata says he is trying to grasp the structure of the game while training alongside big names. I just want to get to know the structure, the game plan and all the codes for before trying to run it with a full pace and uh, gelling well with the boys. The 25-year-old Lakello villager says playing against Australia is a bonus for him. Being named into the test uh, for June test, uh, really looking forward to um, and feeling excited to be part of this uh, wonderful team. Lok Tevita Vavumbati says Mata will be a valuable player for the team. Vilami Mata is in the squad, he's a young boy, so uh, uh, he's, he's a very big boy, so we probably use him a lot So as a cover for second row and um, back row as well. It's rest day for the Flying Fijians in Melbourne today. The team will face the Wallabies at 5pm on Saturday. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. The much-awaited bout between Sebastian Singh and Junior Fazan Ali will take place in Nandi on the 30th of this month. Launched today, the showdown is being organized by Canada Fiji Southern Boxing Promotions. Meli Tawanga reports. 23-year-old Sebastian Singh says this fight will not be a walk in the park. Junior is an old fox. He knows every trick in the, in the sport. You know, he's been there, he's done that. He's fought some of the best fighters. At the end of the day, you know, he's a human being, I'm a human being. Singh has high hopes for a result in his favor. I breathe, win, everything in my head is victory. That's all, all I know and that's all that I gun for on 30th of uh, this month. Opponent Junior Farzan Ali says he will do all the talking in the ring. Just waiting to come and give a good fight in the ring. I don't want to say much, but I'm just waiting a night to fight this guy. Father was a golden boy and I'm coming to fight. Singh has fought 10 times so far, winning 8 of the bouts, 5 by knockouts. Ali, on the other hand, has fought 37 bouts, of which he came out victorious in 28. 19 of them were by knockouts. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. An all-local based Fiji Mbati side will tour Canada next month. With the opportunity to represent Fiji in an international test, coach Joe Rambele says the 26 local players in the squad have been working hard to earn a spot in the team. Melitawanga has more. The residents have few weeks to prepare and their coach knows the importance of winning. For these two months we try to prepare the team very well because uh, for the game against uh, Canada it'll be, it will be a test match, full international test match. So, and, I, and, you, and the Fiji resident players are very fortunate enough to represent Fiji Mbati to this, uh, to this uh, test match occasion. The two teams met last October in Hawaii when Fiji defeated Canada 26-12 to win the Ohana Cup. Having two tests in Canada, especially Canada has invited us because we last year we beat them in Hawaii. So they put Fiji on the 31st of July, the first test match on the 5th and the second test match on the 12th of July. Fiji National Rugby League Development Officer Etuate Naiwasetawa is positive of a good outing in Canada. On the results we are uh, uh, positive that we are going to give a good game we are against the Canadians. Coach Rambele is expected to announce his final squad early next month. Melitabanga, FBC Sports. 
England are into the semi-finals of the International Cricket Champions Trophy after beating New Zealand by 87 runs with an accomplished all-round display. Batting first, the hosts were bowled out for 310 with several batsmen making half-centuries. In reply, the Black Caps captain Kane Williamson top scored with 87, but they lost regular wickets and were all out for 223. This report from TVNZ. The New Zealand bowlers all leaked runs, giving up 10 sixes as England rollicked along at a runner ball rate. Joe Root led the way with 64. Really beautifully played. Ably assisted by firstly Ben Stokes. Not the biggest of hits. And then Joss Butler kept the momentum going as England posted 310 at Sophia Gardens. Right up on our cameraman up there. The run chase started in the worst possible fashion, with Luke Ronke out first ball to man of the match, Jake Ball, when Stokes claimed Martin Guptill. Gone, gone, went full. As usual, all the pressure was on Kane Williamson. Oh, that's nasty. It's crashed into the side of Kane Williamson's lid. Wakes you up a little bit and, yeah, you know, it was a little bit too paced, a little bit up and down and you did have to watch the ball hard and I, I probably didn't watch it as hard as I should have that occasion. And Liam Plunkett nailed Ross Taylor in the same over. That's just kicked as well. The skipper recovered to make his fifth consecutive ODI 50 against England as he dominated a 95-run partnership with Taylor. And when we did lose wickets and we were required to come out and play a few more shots perhaps with our middle lower order, um, you know, it was, a, it was a really tough, tough job. Plunkett then rips through the all-rounders and tail. Enders. He's going to pick up another wicket here, he does. The Black Caps bundled out within 45 overs, 88 runs short of the target. That's it from sports this evening. Catch weather later on with Angie and in new media. DJI unveils a mini drone packed with intelligent features and palm control. All that and more coming up. Bola, <laughs> In new media, DJI recently unveiled the Spark, the first mini drone packed with intelligent features, obstacle avoidance and palm control. Spark is the first drone that uses can control by hand gestures alone, successfully removing the barriers between you and your camera in the sky. Angie joins us now with the very latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It was just another wet and windy day across many parts of the country today. And also, it was a bit chiller than usual. Good thing if you took your coats and jackets along to work. Looking at today in the west, it was partly sunny with clouds engaging in the afternoon bit and blocked that sunshine. Few showers can be expected for tonight. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, there was absolutely no sign of any sunshine, like nothing. And up in Vanuatu, there was a mixture of sun and clouds and rain is likely for tonight. At sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, low tide tonight will be at 10.47 with a high tide tomorrow morning at 4.57. Sunrise will be at 6.33. For tomorrow, we will continue with this rainy weather pattern. Tomorrow's temps, Nandi and Lotoka will have highs of 30. And looking ahead to Friday, conditions are likely to improve. We hope that it gets well soon so we all can have a jolly good weekend. And that, Jackie, is FBC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Pulse today, we asked what precaution is necessary during this cold weather. Well, I think it's, uh, people should stay at home with their family and uh, keep themselves warm with warm clothes protect themselves and they'll be good for their health too. Yeah? Just uh, wear warm clothes and keep warm. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, the migration of the pearl mullet has begun around the eastern province of Turkey. The pearl mullet is an endemic fish species found only in that area. 
Recapping the main stories, New Zealand lifts ban on eggplant export. AG emphasizes on regular maintenance of sugar mills and ministry questioned on misuse of funds. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, has the campaign for next year's general election started too soon? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, today's shot of the day was sent from the Garden Island of Fiji by Ravinesh Chant, the dusk falling slowly at first light in hotel in Waievo, Taviuni. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. हमारा नाम संत कुमार है हम रेडियो फीजी टू सुनता है और ताबुआ में सबसे बेहाल रेडियो फीजी टू है यार हम बिना विमलेश रकविंदी ताबुआ से रेडियो फीजी टू हमारा सबसे फेवरेट स्टेशन है हमारा नाम ब्रूस राव है रेकरे की मार्केट बेंडा और रेडियो फीजी टू देश के दर्कन 1954 से हम सुनता है हम कबूली ताबुआ रहता है हमारा नाम है रमेश चंद और हमारी मछली के धंधा है और हम सप्तम रेडियो फीजी टू सुनता है। रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन।